Hello everyone, I'm Leslie Schreiner and today I'm really happy to have this wonderful old dog, uh, Standard Schnauzer. He's 14 years old. I knew him when he was a young dog and a show dog and now I get to help take care of him toward the end of his life and I'm really happy. Our old dogs are so precious and so valuable and so vulnerable. They're fragile, they can be delicate, both in body and in mind. And there's a lot of different things that we can do and that we need to do to help them have the best experiences they can in the end of their, the end of their days. And part of that is grooming. Grooming old dogs can be a challenge. It can be really daunting, the idea of maybe doing it yourself. But there's a lot of reasons why doing it yourself, grooming your old schnauzer, might be your dog's best choice. Nobody knows your dog better than you do. Their quirks, their long-term injuries, their areas where they're sensitive, the things that they're reactive to, the list just goes on and on and on. Now, we don't always have the option of, of grooming at home or so a lot of us think. So I want to talk about some of the, th some of the things that you can do at home to kind of start to get yourself used to the idea that maybe you can groom your old dog. Maybe you are qualified. Maybe it's not that hard. Maybe it's still the safest thing you can do for your dog. One of the first things that we learn when we're handling old dogs is it's important to know how their joints do and don't bend. Um, legs up, down, front legs, they do not really come out to the side much. You can't bring the elbow out to the side. So if you have to lift to get into the armpit or something like that, you have to be really mindful that the dog's only going to give, be able to give you but so much flexibility and you're going to have to probably contort a little bit yourself in order to get into those spots. Then when we look at the, the back end, the hips can be sore and the hips might not open up the way they used to. So when they're younger, we can lift this leg out to the side to clip the belly and to clip around the privates, around the penis and um, the vulva for a female. So before you start, stretching is a good idea. I'm really, I'm only stretching his leg upward to the point where I feel resistance so I know what he can give me. I'm not trying to stretch it like a, ex extend the, the range of motion that he has there. Mostly I just want to be aware of what he can give me so that when I am working underneath, then I can do that uh, safely and comfortably for him. All the joints can get stiff, so we need to know how to move them, move them a little bit before we start so we get an idea. Sometimes they have one leg that, especially one of the rear ones that they favor, they naturally don't put as much weight on the one and they put more on the other. And then what you find when you're doing the back is then when you lift the weak leg, it's fine. The other leg is used to carrying the extra weight. But when you try to lift the leg that normally holds the extra weight, then the weaker leg may have difficulty holding all of that weight. So you may need to find some ways to hold or support while you're working where you can reach underneath to hold them up so that you're supporting more of the weight and his joints don't have to. Another very common situation with older dogs is they get warts and they get lumps and they get bumps and they get cysts. And a lot of those hide in this longer hair. A lot of those um, can actually pop up pretty fast or can change. So grooming regularly whether it's at home or by a professional, is just a really good way to monitor that 
for old dogs. When it comes to lumps and bumps and things like that, mostly what I was taught, mostly what I learned was that um, you keep an eye on them. And if they have pretty regular borders, uh, you know, pretty round, um, they don't change size or shape too much, then they're probably going along okay. Definitely have them checked out by your vet when you, you know, go in for your wellness visits. But the thing you want to watch is for any bumps to become irregularly shaped or change somehow. They suddenly get bigger. They suddenly get lumpier. They suddenly start oozing. They suddenly start getting a scab or get flaky, especially if they've been really consistent for quite a while and then they suddenly change or they change rather rapidly over the course of four, six, eight, 12 weeks, something like that. That's definitely something you wanna get in and get checked out. Old dogs can have additional issues. They might have chronic ear infections, if your dog's had allergies during its life, ear infections are much more likely. Skin infections can be likely too. And the solution to this is pretty much always keeping the coat shorter. I just have found over the years that when they start getting really overgrown in the face, we don't interact with them in quite the same way and they pick up on that. I can't explain it, but on some level, they feel less okay with themselves because the interaction has changed between you and them. So keeping that trimmed up and keeping the dog in nice, consistent condition makes it easier to maintain your relationship, to see changes as they're happening, and to be able to respond uh, appropriately to them. We are going to get some grooming done on this old guy. I hope that you can get some confidence yourself to give it a try. Again, nobody knows your dog better than you do. And your dog doesn't know anybody better than you. So the trust is everything, especially with the old dogs. And it may just be that you're the only one that your old dog's going to be able to trust. And if that's the case, you're going to owe it to him to step out of your comfort zone if necessary to learn how to do something that you're a little worried about, potentially, because it's still better than not doing it. I'm here to help you learn how to do it. I'm here to help guide you and um, support you through the journey of taking care of your dog. I'm here to share my in experience and share my knowledge, share my information with you so that we can all have better time with our dogs. Our dogs can have better times in our in their lives and in our lives. The first thing that I like to make sure is done is what I call the maintenance clipper work. The maintenance clipper work is the face, the, the cheeks, the throat, the ears, um, for an old dog like him, for sure, top of the head, uh, we don't clipper the top of uh, a hand strip dog, but very, very few dogs at this age are still hand stripped. So we clipper the head, cheeks, ears, throat, pads of the feet, the private area, the, um, the hygienic bits. <laughs> Cause nobody wants to wake up, right? We've all been there if we've had old dogs long enough. And poor old old guy, old girl couldn't hold it all night. And it's been a while since we did the clipper work in the back and now we have to deal with poop butt. So nobody wants that. Maintenance clipper work includes underneath the tail, the anus area, uh, for females, the vulva, for males, the penis underneath and up the belly, the armpits a little bit also. I use Andy's clippers. Typically, it's what I'm used to. And for maintenance clipper work, I use a 10 blade. To get started, I'm going to lift up his head, kind of assess how much lift I can get. I'm going to bring his beard forward at the, at the point where 
the long hair comes forward and the short hair goes down on his throat. That's about where I'm going to start the clipper work. I'm going to move slowly with him because I don't know where his lumps and bumps are. And I don't want to be in a hurry and accidentally find them by clippering into them. Um, part of why I use a 10 blade is because it's pretty safe blade. It's hard to cut skin with a 10 blade. So if you're not going too fast, even if you come up on a lump or a bump that you didn't expect, you can still um, clipper around it, clipper up to it gently without, um, without nicking it or making a little cut. Sometimes with an older dog or a little thin and a little bony, if you have a one that's a little bit on the bony side, just go slow so that you don't uh, scrape over the cheekbones and like I said about holding the jaw, be gentle about that. If this is something you'd like to learn how to do for your own dog, the maintenance clipper work, I did make a course for that. It teaches all the basic lines and techniques and tools for doing the work I'm doing right now. There's a module on uh, basic scissor work. There's also uh, toenails, lots of demonstrations and diagrams and talk through in great detail about what I'm just showing you here. There's a lot of little different things that you can do to help them stay safe, how to hold, which direction to clipper, when you use which blades, any question you might have about doing maintenance clipper work on a schnauzer, doesn't matter what color he is because we've got the modules in there for black dogs as well as salt and pepper dogs, natural ears, natural tails, as well as cropped and docked. So we really made an effort to have examples of, of really just about any kind of schnauzer that you are going to encounter to do maintenance clipper work on. If you're interested to check it out, see the trailer for it and decide if it's right for you. All right, I still use a 10 also when I'm doing the rear end. You want to make sure that your blade doesn't get too hot. So part of how you can tell how I learned to do it is if you lay the flat part of the blade on your wrist, if it's hot to you, it's hot to them. So having done that, I am going to put a little bit of um, cooling spray onto my blade. Cool it off. Yeah, that's better. All right, now having lifted the legs earlier so that I could see how far they could go, I lift them very close to his body. There's a special way I hold them so that I can get underneath them without them having to do too much. You see, I fold the leg up so that it's very close to his body. So we focus on the things that make the biggest difference to their health and hygiene first. That's why I choose the maintenance clipper work first because that's where the health and hygiene really is going to be the most apparent. Back here, working on uh, the rear, Sometimes there's lumps and bumps back here. Sometimes they get a cyst on the anus or they could get swelling around uh, the, the anal glands. Those are things that can definitely happen and you want to keep your eyes open. Again, doing it yourself, you see changes that um, otherwise you just have to hope somebody else sees and lets you know about in time uh, to get the medical help you need. I mean, as a, as a groomer, there have been about half a dozen times in the last 25 years where I told a client about s something I found and then they let me know very soon after that, after taking them to the vet, that I had probably saved their life because I brought something to the owner's attention that they didn't know to look for or couldn't see through all the hair or what have you. So imagine how much better you're going to see what you need to when it's your own dog. So now we've kind of roughed in the face, the private areas, and we're going to take some of this extra hair off on the body now. 
You don't want to go too fast. It's a little overstimulating for the old dog sometimes, but you don't want to go too slow because we've only got a certain window for how long they can stand up at one time before it starts getting uncomfortable. It's a good idea whether you groom your dog or whether you have somebody else groom your old dog, it's a good idea to talk to your vet about pain medications on the day. It's a lot for an old dog. It's a lot of standing. So it's a good idea to talk to your veterinarian about um, pain medications if your dog has arthritis. One of the things dogs do, unfortunately, when they're old and they're stressed is they tense themselves up and when they tense themselves up, that makes things hurt more, and then that makes them more tense and more stressed. So, a little bit of pain medication on board can really help your dog have a better experience. There's also some medications uh, that help for pain, but also are good for the dogs with senility. Those are certainly worth considering. How much better do we get through life when it doesn't hurt as much, right? Here's something else that's important about keeping your old dog regularly groomed. I'm a pretty good judge of how, how heavy or how much body a dog has, but with all of this hair, especially with all this undercoat, I thought this was a heavier dog than it turns out that he is. He's perfectly healthy weight right now. He's got a little bit of extra cushion there. I can feel it. I got to push through a little bit to get to his ribs. So he's in good physical condition, but they can lose weight really quickly when they're older and you might not see it through the hair. I don't leave a whole lot of extra, extra hair on the old dogs, on the legs, especially legs and face, because it's a, just a lot for them to get brushed out and they generally don't like it. And it's generally not too necessary. You can just keep them in a shorter coat and it's easier to care for in every way.